So what is up guys, I am Alex Mayor of 6A. Today I will be talking about airspace classes. So there are different classes of airspace. We have class A, class B, class C. But what exactly is airspace? And what do these different classes mean? So basically the air or atmosphere above a country is controlled by that country. Which piece of at atmosphere above the land is that country's airspace? A country's overall airspace can be divided to different classes, and there are seven classes in total ranging from class A to class G. Each airspace class is basically a set of rules which describes how an aircraft should fly and also how an aircraft controls interact with those aircrafts. Overall, this allows a country to better control the planes within its airspace for safety and also for security. Now, the seven classes have been created and defined by the International Civil Aviation Organization. These were created in an attempt to standardize the airspace across the planet. All countries adhere to these regulations, however, they do alter the airspace class to suit their own needs. For example, a country doesn't have to use all seven classes to control their airspace. They may only use maybe four or five out of these seven classes. A country can also add a specific rule to their airspace regulations. So what I'm going to do is explain the basic differences of airspace. Controlled airspace is a generic term that covers the different classifications of airspace and defined dimensions within which air traffic control or ATC service is provided in accordance with the airspace classification. So. A controlled airspace consists of five classes, Class A, Class B, Class C, Class D, and Class E. So for Class A airspace, it is generally the airspace from 18,000 feet mean sea level up to and including flight level 600, including the airspace overlying the waters within 12 nautical miles unless otherwise authorized all operations in Class A airspace is conducted under instrument flight rules. For Class B airspace, it is generally airspace from the surface to 10,000 feet MSL, surrounding the nation's busiest airports in terms of flight operation or passenger implantments. The configuration of each Class B airspace area is individually tailored, consists of a surface area or two, or more layers and is designed to contain all published instruments procedures once an aircraft enters the airspace. ATC clearance is required for all aircrafts to operate in the area and all aircrafts that are cleared received separation services with the airspace. In Class C airspace, it is generally airspace from the surface to 4,000 feet above the airport's elevation surrounding. Those airports that have an operation control tower are serviced by a radar approach control and have a certain number of IFR operations or passenger implantments. Although the configuration of each Class C area is individually tailored, the airspace usually consists of a surface area with a 5 nautical mile radius, an outer circle with a 10 nautical mile radius that extends from 1,200 feet to 4,000 feet above the airport's elevation. Each aircraft must establish two-way radio communication with the ATC facility providing air traffic service pr prior to entering the airspace and thereafter must maintain those communication while within the airspace. So in Class D, it is generally the airspace from the surface to 2,500 feet above the airport's elevation. Surrounding those airports that have an operational control tower, the configuration of each Class D airspace area is individually tailored and when instrument procedures are published, the airspace is normally designed to contain the procedures. Arrival extensions for instrument approach procedures may be Class D or Class E airspace unless otherwise authorized each aircraft must establish two-way radio communication with the ATC facility providing air traffic services prior to entering the airspace and thereafter maintaining those communication while in the airspace. And finally, for controlled airspace, Class E, 
Class E airspace is controlled airspace, not classified as Class A, Class B, Class C, or Class D airspace. A large amount of this airspace over the United States is designed as Class E airspace. This provides sufficient airspace for the safe control and separation of aircraft during IFR operations. So, what's up, guys? So, what's up in the sky? It's the airplane behind the cloud, right? So, now and now I'm going to talk about the uncontrolled area or the restricted areas in the aviation. So, what does we think when we look at the sky? See, so for me, we think I think that it is a peaceful place, right? But the skies in aviation is not ju just a peaceful place. We also have a rules and regulations in aviation. So just like. Uh, Mr. Mayor just dis have discussed We have the, in the controlled area We have the class A, B, C, D and E airspace But in my case in the uncontrolled area, I'm going to talk about the class letter class G in the aviation so Although the ATC has no authorization or responsibility in to control the air traffic, the pilots should remember that there are visual flight rules or the VFR minimums that apply to the Class G airspace. So just like in the ATC, the ATC's job and the pilot's job are to avoid the restricted areas now we are going to talk about the ATC in the pilot's job now and their job is to create a flight plan before taking the flight of a pilot and its purpose is to avoid the restricted areas or the uncontrolled areas where the pilots can be safe and together with the passengers can be safe and to avoid the restricted areas the pilots and ATC can see the patterns easily by looking to the sky vector which they use as their guide to create a flight plan this is sky vector can help the pilot see where the limitations of their aircraft can fly through the sky. The next part I'm going to talk about is the special use of airspace or what we call the SAO. So the SAO or the special use of operation is where we will know the different kinds of limitations in the sky now for example if an aircraft entered in one area that are having an activities which are not safe and the aircraft is not in being involved they may get in post or something might not good may happen to them and the first one is prohibited areas and in these prohibited areas aircrafts are not allowed to enter this zone or it may cause harm to the pilots or the passengers during the flight and the second one is the restricted areas or the what they call the hazardous areas which um, there are only limited aircrafts that are allowed to enter that zone and which which are the non-participating aircrafts or the pilots will have turned around and change location to where, to where the place is safe 
and the third one is the warning areas this warning areas is the similar in nature to the restricted area which is it is also a hazardous area that may cause harm to the aircraft and this place is from the word warning areas it is a warn to the pilots and the aircraft to not fly around that to that zone and the fourth one is the military operational area in this area only the military operational area are allowed to enter that zone and and this is the vertical and lateral of operational limit the fifth one is the alert areas and these alert areas can be found in the aeronautical charts with the letter A with the with a follow-up number to inform the pilots which they should they should avoid during flight and and now the last is which is the sixth part are the controlled firing areas which are hazardous and the pilots should avoid because they may get involved in that area which which is unsafe and and as a pilot's job it is their job to bring the passenger safely from the to their destinations and gives them a comfortable seat during flight what's up guys welcome to my vlog so ngayon magdi-discuss tayo about sa advisory routes restrictions operation areas and types of air airspace gusto niyo malaman so tara samahan niyo Kasi natin yung first topic ngayong araw is local airport advisory. So tara alamin natin ito ang mga isa. Local airport advisory, also known as LA, is a service provided by facilities that are located at the landing or airport. They have ground to air communication and discrete frequency or tower frequency when the tower is closed. Local airport advisories are more often used at smaller or general aviation airports because they are the airports that tend to have part-time towers. So, guys. So, guys, ito yung typical conditions under which LA issued at an airport. Guys. So, what are guys? Kanting talo ng pabot They inform the pilot of anything that may be important to them before the pilot lands at the airport. Since the towers is closed for the night, the pilot will have no access to information about the airport except for what is published in the airport facilities. Next topic natin is military training route. Sa military training route, tuturo natin kung paano i-depicted yung MTR. Meron silang dark gray rectangles can be observed on the BFR chart. BFR LUX chart. Meron siyang light gray line passing in the middle of them. Papakita ko sa inyo pagkataas ko discuss kung pa paano siya. Those rectangles depict the presence of military training routes in the area. Altogether, they described a horizontal L in the example shown in the chart. Ito yung chart.
Uh, the next question is, what the MTRs are? Those military routes are used by military aircraft for training purposes. So, ayan siya guys. Ginagamit yung military routes para sa training ng mga military sa US. Basically, the military planes will squawk 4,000. Forbidden to civil aircraft and so is the possibility to exceed 250 kayas to indicate on the ATC controller scope that they are flying at higher speed along the MTRs. Uh, yung what the MTRs are. From an ATC perspective, papakita ko sa inyo guys ang perspective ni sa chart na may update. Next topic natin is temporal flight restrictions, also known as TFR. So, ngayon, didiscuss na natin kung ano bang meron dito sa TFR. So, ito na guys, didiscuss ko na sa inyo meaning ng TFR. What does a TFR mean? If your aircraft is not participating in the event or activity for which the TFR has been issued, it cannot take off, land, or fly through the defined airspace during that time. TFRs are issued as a notice to airmen and provided as part of your pilot flight briefing. Next is when are TFRs issued? It means a parachute operation that involves the descent one or more persons to the surface from an aircraft. Parachute jump aircraft operations are published in the Child Supplement US, formerly Airport Facility Director. Sites that use frequently are depicted on sectional charts. Oh, hell no! For the sake of parachutes, for the result of its investigation, the MTS urged the FAA to require that parachute jump operators use FAA aircraft. Aircraft maintenance and inspection programs. The next topic is published BFR routes. Published BFR routes are for transitioning around under or through some complex airspace. Terms such as BFR flyway, BFR corridor, class B airspace, BFR transition route, and terminal area BFR route. These routes are generally found on BFR terminal area planning charts. Guys, that's it. This is the end of my vlog. I hope you enjoy and learn something. What is up guys? I am Jefferson De Vega of 6A and today I'll be showing you the best way to memorize the basic BFR weather minimum. So the first thing you want to do is put 313 on the upper left and put this on the upper right. And it's going to look like this. The next thing you should do is to, to draw the lower part of the letter E and the letter G. This might look confusing, but trust me, 
it would save your time and um it really put the practice to understand this this would be a piece of cake the next thing you want to do is put three one three in this kind of pattern the next thing you should do is to put number five above this shape about an inch or two and then put a letter c inside this kind of box next thing is you should draw two right angles in the lower part of e and the lower part of g just like that the next thing you should do is to put 10,000 feet marker and 1,200 feet marker in this area. The next thing you want to do is to divide this letter G into half and then label it day operation and then night operation. Bring down one and bring down three. Put the letters C and D. Lastly, put the triple one beside the number five and uh, 152 beside the number 3 here also also here I'll explain later what this means so the 152 stands for 1,000 feet above, 5,000 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontally. And for class B, the 3 means 3 statute miles, and C means 0 clouds. For class C, the 3 means 3 statute miles, and the, the 1 means 1,000 feet above, the 5 means 5,000 feet below, and the 2 means 2,000 feet horizontal, and the list goes on and on. For the class airspace, class A, the entry requirements is 8 DC clearance, the equipment needed is IFR equipped, minimum pilot certificate is at least instrument rating. For the class B, class airspace, the entry requirements is 8 DC clearance, and the equipment needed is a two-way radio transponder with altitude reporting capability and the minimum pilot certificate required is private. For class B, the entry requirement needed is a two-way radio communication prior to entry. The equipment needed is another two-way radio transponder with altitude reporting capability and the minimum pilot certificate is no specific requirement needed. Hi sir, I will present the last three operating rules and pilot slash equipment requirements. So the last three that I have are class D, class E, and class G. So let's start with class D. So the class D, no pilot may take off or land an aircraft at a satellite airport within a class D airspace area except in compliance with FAA arrival and departure traffic patterns. A pilot departing from the primary airport or satellite airport with an operating control tower must establish and maintain two-way radio communications with the control tower and thereafter is instructed by the ATC while operating in the class D airspace area. If you are to depart in a satellite airport without a control tower, so the pilot must establish and communicate with the ATC facility that is in charge with the jurisdiction over the Class D airspace as soon as they are to depart. So two-way radio com communication is a must in Class D airspace. So 
it will be maintained throughout the class D airspace and be left out when the aircraft has left the jurisdiction. So, if the aircraft radio fails in the flight under IFR, so the pilot should continue the flight, but eh, continue the flight and the route assigned by the last ATC clearance received. So, if being radio vectored by the direct route from the point of radio failure to the fix route or airway specified in the vector clearance in the absence of an assigned route so the pilot should continue by the route that the ATC provided to them the flight plan they should follow it if they are under IFR so what if it's under VFR so if it fails in the VFR the pilot in command will take charge in the aircraft so they they will land if the weather conditions are at the above basic VFR weather minimum. So, visual contact with the tower is maintained and a clearance to love must be received from the tower. Going on to classy airspace. So, unless authorized by the ATC facility that has jurisdiction over the classy airspace, a pilot may not be able to operate there in or on the vicinity of classy airspace or unless authorized or required by the ATC so no person can, uh, can operate over the said airspace so if you are authorized to the said airspace which is class E so the having an operational control tower and having two-way radio communication which is like the class D airspace so communication must be established but this has a specific uh, what should I say a specific distance which is 4 nautical miles and the altitude which is above 2,500 2, feet so if the radio fails in the aircraft so the PIC may or the pilot in command may operate the said aircraft or and land if the weather minimums and the VFR minimums are being observed in the aircraft this is for VFR flight rules okay so visual contact is maintained with the tower and the clearance to love is to receive so if under IFR the pilot should continue the flight that is the route assigned by the ATC just like in class D airspace you will follow your flight plan and get your radio fixed on the way so that is with the class E airspace I forgot to mention that the beginning January 2020 the aircraft operating in the class E airspace must have an equipment which is the ADB, ADSB out equipment installed in the aircraft which means the performance requirements of 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91, Decimal 227. The last but not the least, the Class G airspace. So, when approaching to land at an airport in the Class G airspace, the first thing you should to do is the pilot should make all the turns to the left. The pilot who is in charge of the aircraft to the left. So, they should wait for the approved light signals that would be coming from the airport so that they would have a safe and nice landing and second is that each pilot of the helicopter or powered parachute must avoid the flow of fixed wing aircraft so the rule is simple for the helicopters and powered parachutes they would just avoid the traffic of the winged aircraft so unless otherwise authorized or required by ATC no person may operate an aircraft to from through or on an airport having an operational control tower unless there's two-way radio communication that is maintained between the aircraft and the control tower so it's just like in class D and class E they should have a radio communication two-way so that the control tower would understand the aircraft so and vice versa so 
Just like in class E, the communication must be established within 4 nautical miles and the altitude including 2,500 and up feet in altitude. So, however, if the aircraft fails in flight, the PIC may operate that aircraft and land if weather conditions are at, are at or above basic EVFR weather minimum. So, this is just like in the class D and class E when the radio radio fails in the VFR type of flight. So the the pilot in command will take in charge and will land if the weather weather conditions and VFR weather minimums are in check. So they would wait for visual contact and a clearance to land. And in IFR, if the radio fails in IFR, the pilot should continue the flight plan and the flight path that was given by the ATC. ATC, what was cleared for them, and so that they would follow the flight plan respectfully, that was designed by the ATC. So, in the absence of an assigned route. The, pil the pilot should continue by the route that the ATC advised. So, if there's no flight plan that was given, the pilot should be continuing the route that was given by the ATC. So, they would not get lost. And that's for the three airspaces that was assigned to me. To give a little bit of more information, so there are still there are some that are that have uncontrolled airspace so it's possible for some airports within class G airspace to have a control tower and ultralight vehicles no person may operate an ultralight vehicle within class A class B class C or class D airspace or within the lateral boundaries of the surface area of class E airspace designated for an airport unless the person has prior authorization from the ATC facility to have in jurisdiction over that place so and having ultralight vehicles in class E, so you need, you should need an authorization from the ATC that is in charge from that jurisdiction. And in unmanned free balloons, unless otherwise authorized by ATC, no person may operate an unmanned free balloon below 2,000 feet above the surface within the lateral boundaries of class B, class C, class D, or class E airspace designated for an airport it may be possible to have an unmanned to have an unmanned free balloon but you would need an authorization from the atc and in unmanned aircraft systems regulations are being regard regarding unmanned aircraft systems are currently being developed so and lastly the parachute jumps no person may make may make a parachute jump and no Piloting command may allow a parachute jump to be made from an aircraft in or into class A, class B, class C, or class D airspace without or in violation of the terms of an ATC authorization. So you would need authorization first before doing their devil parachute jumps. So thank you and I would be leaving a summary table for the operating rules and pilot equipment requirements and it will become a right about now Now I don't wanna share